Hello, welcome to Dharmesh Mehta YouTube channel. In today's Boost Your Basic series, we are going to learn about micrometrics. We have studied previous that micrometrics is science and technology of small particles. And today we are going to learn about flowability or flow properties of particles, which is a derived property. So let's get started. So angle of repose is one of the parameter which measures the flow property of a powder. So this is the apparatus you have seen in the lab, which is used to measure the angle of repose. So this is a stand over here, which have clamps. So in this clamps, the funnel is placed and over funnel powder is poured from here. So a heap of powder is formed. So what is angle of repose? It is the maximum angle possible between the surface of pile of powder. So this is the surface and the horizontal plane. So this is the horizontal plane. So tangent of angle of repose, that is theta, is equal to the coefficient of friction mu. So if we are getting angle of repose, that is theta, tan of theta will give us coefficient of friction. So how is tan theta or angle of repose measured? So now we are pouring a powder over the funnel and it is forming a hip. So we trace the hip and draw a circle. And from the circle, we get diameter, which is divided by two to get radius. Okay, measuring the height of this hip by scale. So now we are getting the angle of repose, right? Tan theta is equal to H divided by R, right? So this is the angle of repose theta. So, so this is the angle of repose that is theta. So tan of theta will be H by R. So how we are getting this? Tan theta is opposite upon adjacent. So opposite we have height of hip. And in adjacent, we have radius, okay? So opposite upon adjacent, so we get tan theta is equal to H by R. So theta is tan inverse of H by R. So in this way, we are getting angle of repose in degree. Now we have got the angle of repose. So now we will determine the type of loop. So here we have angle of repose in degree and here we have type of flow. If the angle of repose come between 25 to 30 degree, then the flow of powder is excellent. If it comes between 31 to 35, the flow of powder is good. If it comes between 36 to 40, it is fair flow and flow aid is not needed. So flow aid, that's talking about the glidance which are used to improve the flow property. Next, 41 to 45, the flow is classical, but it may require the flow aid. Next, 46 to 55, poor type of flow. Agitation of vibration is required to flow the powder. 56 to 65, very poor flow. And over 66, very, very poor practice. If flow of powder is above 55, they are not used. So the next parameter which measures the flow property is recording flow meter. So this is a recording flow meter. Here you can see a clamp. So hoppers, these are the hoppers which are placed over here. This is a container and here you can see measuring balance. So let's look at it. So flow meter measure the rate at which powder is discharged from hopper. So it is measuring the rate at which powder is discharged from this hopper into this container or onto weighing balance. So powder is allowed to discharge from the hopper or container into a balance. So it is placed over here. So now powder is flowing from hopper onto the balance and it is recording the increase in powder mass with time. Okay. So now it is measuring mass flow rate. So how it is measured? Discharge powder mass upon time. 
so discharge powder management is the powder which is flowing from ear to ear so its mass is measured by the weighing scale right so its mass is measured and it is divided by time so time which the powder takes to discharge from hopper into the container or onto the weighing balance okay so so recording flow meter is mostly used in the industries now we are going to look at the factors affecting the flow properties of powder first factor is particle size and distribution so in this picture you can see two types of particles first is finer particles and second is coarse particles so the flow rate is directly proportional to the diameter of the particles the next is particle shape and texture so here we have two types of particle this particle has flakes as a shape and here we have spherical shape so spherical shapes can easily glide so this will show better flow properties than the flake subject than the flaker particles the next property is surface forces so particles have forces present on its surface those forces are adhesion forces cohesive forces or repulsive forces when bigger particles are broken down into smaller particles more surface area is generated this will lead to increase in this forces the last is flow activators these are the glidens which increase the flow property of the powders example of glidens are magnesium stearate starch and talc optimum 1% concentration of glidens in is used to increase the flow this is a question from this topic and the question is free flowing powder show a flatter cone and have options are smaller angle of repose option b larger angle of repose option c intermediate angle of repose option d none of the above and the answer is option e smaller angle of repose so the powder is freely flowing and it is showing a flatter cone if the cone of the powder is flatter the height will be less and that's why the angle of repose will be smaller thank you